The universe is teeming with countless intelligent life forms. Estimated 400 billion stars in our galaxy. 400 billion galaxies in the known universe. We are not alone on this planet. Never have been. We've been to the moon. We've been to Mars. And apparently some of our people have been to other star systems. Because apparently 40 years ago we developed not only zero point energy, but we developed anti-gravity and we developed the ability to fly faster than the speed of light. Hello, virtuous viewers, and welcome to Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. In recent years, there has been an increase in the number of sightings reported globally of unidentified flying objects, or UFOs. Today on our program, we are delighted to present the second part in a three-part series featuring a highly engaging interview with an expert ufologist, Mr. Robert Oral Dean, also known as Bob Dean a retired command sergeant major in the U.S. Army. Last week on Science and Spirituality, Mr. Dean revealed that while serving in the military, he was authorized to read a top secret document called The Assessment. The Assessment concluded that the Earth has been under detailed observation by extraterrestrials since the beginning of human history. He states the culture, technology, and development of these otherworldly beings far surpasses anything found on Earth. Bob Dean retired from the Army in 1976, and at that point, he says members of more than a dozen different extraterrestrial civilizations had come to Earth. These individuals are from across the universe, and sometimes from other dimensions. They're not visitors. They're not here as tourists, you know, dropping in for a weekend or something like that. The planet is under quarantine. And the only ones who come and go regularly are the professionals, the anthropologists, the historians, the scientists from their, from their groups. They come regularly. They're, they're here most of the time. It's one of the reasons why there is not about to be a disclosure anytime soon because the story is simply too big. The things we've seen and the things I've learned firsthand is that this beautiful, wonderful planet that our ancestors called Gaia looked upon her as a goddess. The planet was alive. Well, I've learned that that's true. This beautiful little blue-green planet is alive. But this planet apparently is one of the richest and ripest zoological gardens in this quadrant of the galaxy. The life forms, the flora and fauna on this planet are practically infinite. Now that's why Earth is such a valuable commodity. There are probably thousands of intelligent species out there. Look upon this little tiny planet, this zoological garden, as an incredibly valuable commodity. I point out to people, you know, you're part of the fauna. It may be difficult for your ego to deal with. You are simply an occupant in this zoological garden. Ah, but now we're dealing with the custodians. They're not visitors. They, they're not owners. The word that I've gotten it from them they're kind of custodians. They're protecting and looking after the life on this planet. And the human race is part of that fauna. Our world is currently going through many serious challenges, most notably climate change. Many spiritual leaders, visionaries, and others see this as a very crucial period for humanity's development. 
in a human race, the whole species is undergoing a transcendent transformation, literally, from one level of species, one race into another. The human race is undergoing a form of what I call a late adolescence. And I point out to people, if you remember your own adolescence and you remember how painful it was and how difficult it was, <clears throat> the whole species is undergoing a, a transition from adolescence into adulthood. And we've got some good friends in high places out there, and fortunately, some very good friends who want to see us make it. They don't own us. We are not property, as Charles Fort said one time. But we, we are not quite finished yet as a race. We are a, a work in progress. We are an unfinished product. And we've got some good friends in high places that are trying to assist us, to help us get through this transition. And it's an awkward period. But I believe in the human race. It has a future. We are having some rough and difficult times, but we're going to make it. And I, I, the reason I decided to come with you this afternoon and give you this interview was hopefully to be able to say to your audience, to the viewers, that people really should not be afraid. They have nothing to fear. We're going to make it through and we are going to reach a form of adulthood and we are in time going out there and take our rightful place in this infinite universe filled with intelligent life and I say to people your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren are going to the stars and they're going out there and they're going to take their rightful place humans have a right to sit at those great conferences, those great tables filled with all the infinite intelligent life forms out there. Does our galaxy have a governance system? We asked Mr. Dean whether there is some sort of galactic federation that oversees the affairs of the Milky Way. There is indeed, surprisingly, something very much like a galactic federation. And I will tell you that the headquarters for that organization is not even in this galaxy. It's in another galaxy. Apparently, the universe is literally teeming with intelligent life. And uh, yes, some of the more advanced races have come together and they have formed an organization. And they do get together frequently and communicate with each other. <clears throat> and Project Earth and Project Human Race is at the top of their list at the moment because we are a difficult, troublesome species. And they are really working to help us get through this transition. Now, most of them went through transitions of this kind in their own histories, ancient, ancient histories, going back eons of time millennia, eons, literally. Some of those advanced species are a million years ahead of us, scientifically, spiritually, culturally, psychologically, sociologically. I've, I've seen that, and I've been a part of that, and I've been shown that, which literally has caused my old paradigm to collapse. Because you see, I have seen what can be. I have seen what the human species can ultimately become. And I know that with assistance and help and guidance from a lot of them, we're going to make it. But having seen that, and then coming back and living in this world, I find it very painful. On previous occasions, through her insights, Supreme Master Ching Hai has shared with the world some of the history of Mars. 
Some 40 million years ago, runaway climate change, the result of livestock raising, utterly destroyed Mars's surface and atmosphere. The residents who survived this immense catastrophe, all vegetarians, needed to go inside the planet to stay alive. There are some Martians still survived. You know, the good one, the virtuous one, they survived, but they could not live the way they lived before. They are underground and they have to recycle everything. Water, vegetable, very little thing they have. Around six million of them only. And it could happen to us also. It could happen to us like that, that we might have to live underground to survive and recycle oxygen, recycle vegetable, recycle water, and be frugal and sharing absolutely everything, like the Martian people do. They are not used to with the living on the surface anymore. They are safer down there, because the Mars is still not inhabitable yet. Well, she's right in the fact that there is life on Mars. There is a remnant of a vast civilization on Mars. Mars underwent some very terrible times, uh, tectonically, I think, uh, meteorologically. Mars suffered a great deal. There were some problems, earthquakes. Mars lost most of its surface seas. It lost most of its atmosphere and the survivors of those cataclysms literally had to go underground. And there are large cities under the surface on Mars. I gave you a photograph taken by the Soviet Phobos II spacecraft some years ago, showing a city the size of Chicago. The Phobos program was an unmanned space mission launched by the former Soviet Union with the cooperation of 14 other nations to study Mars and its moons Phobos and Deimos. Phobos II was launched on July 12, 1988. Now this is a gigantic object coming up from the surface of Mars. Like what size are we talking oh, about? Oh, we're talking about a mile maybe at least. While it was in orbit, Phobos II took number of other pictures. Oh, yes, this one. And that was Phobos too, yeah. Now this is an underground city on Mars the size of Chicago. And uh, it's generated an enormous amount of heat. But it's taken in the infrared. But you can look and you can see the city streets and the blocks and all that, and you know, there's a, a lot of people living there, I'm sure. A couple of the other pictures that I show regularly in my presentations were taken by Apollo 13 on the way to the moon. That object's five miles long. That's a big mothership. I got to know a NASA retired scientist, Norman Bergman, and he published a book called The Ringmakers of Saturn. And in that book, there were a whole bunch of pictures. This one, taken by Voyager 1, 1980, this object here mm -hmm. is 2,000 miles long. 450 miles in diameter and it's artificial under intelligent control and it moves around out there. Now this is actually the ring of Saturn here? This is one of the rings, a portion of it. Mr. Dean believes that in order for our world to join the higher order of planetary systems, humanity needs to quickly advance in its development and thus, a global wake-up call for action is urgently needed. You're living in an infinite universe filled with infinite life, and you're about, as a species, to make this incredible jump into a new age. Yeah. But anyhow, there is hope. I'm feeling hopeful about the future of the race. With some help, I know we, we're going to make it. With heartfelt sincerity, thank you, Mr. Dean, for sharing your profound knowledge and precious wisdom with us. Brilliant viewers, 
Please join us again next Monday on Science and Spirituality for the final segment of our interview with Mr. Robert Dean, where he will further discuss how the intergalactic custodians have helped humanity to constructively evolve. Thank you for your presence today on our program. Coming up next is Words of Wisdom after Noteworthy News. May we all choose the path of loving all beings to ensure a beautiful world for future generations. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss.